Hey guys, it's Mickett with the latest version of R2TK, Road to the King. Uh, going to just do the last three bases here today. I haven't had a chance. Right now we're in second, tied for second place of sorts. Actually, technically third place, but uh, uh, the second uh, base on the wins. Uh, going to, haven't taken a look at these bases. I'm just, but I looked at least at the level of them, the 11s and the 10s. I shouldn't have any issues with these and I'll just go through and, um, and battle them away. I don't think that most people will have too much difficulty with this, but for some reason, somebody's having difficulty with one of them. At least this will hopefully help it as some sort of example. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is an SH-11, and you've got two cursed towers there and a crippling poison tower. That thing, I never, I, it doesn't bother me at all. I, when I see that, it makes it nice and easy. A um, couple things to think about. These crippling ones here uh, could be kind of difficult uh, for anything that doesn't protect you from it, uh, like a Zelonia, Brander, things like that. I probably, with this one, just looking at this really quickly, I'm going to probably come through with Brander and just funnel my guys up through the middle. Uh, I have Brander up high enough that I start with five. Zelonia is another possibility on this one coming in from the north side. be very easy funnel. Uh, I don't like that with my Zelonia uh, so much because I don't have her leveled up. So that would be a problem. Although actually now that I look at it, maybe coming in from the north side would be uh, just as good with Brander anyway. So maybe I'll do that. Make it nice and easy because it'll be an easy funnel. Uh, I think I might leave that one archer I have in there. I know a lot of times the, the two pal, three sol um, is a good way to go. I like to have an archer, archer uh, in there, uh, warden, excuse me, when they're when there's a little bit of a question at the end whether or not they'll stand far enough away or be getting hit up front. Uh, so I just like throwing that in there. It really ends up being about the same anyways, um, except that it gives you that extra oomph from an arranged attack because it stays out of the range of those. So uh, let's give this a shot. I'm going to try and do it with no boosts and um, no um, no uh, extra troops. So let's go through, got that there. So uh, the basic idea is I'm going to try and right, go, go right down to the middle. And about these times, these are going to hit them. It's always important to look at the range too, but about time these are going to hit them, I'm going to drop the first spell here, which will protect them for uh, 10 seconds. Uh, I usually uh, I usually say 12. It's actually, and mine is only at right now, it's about 10.5 seconds. Uh, so let's run this right through here. Now, they will have a little difficulty at the beginning getting through these walls, but because there's not too much hitting them, it uh, shouldn't be a problem. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop these guys down there. Absolutely super simple. Uh, I'm going to wait for just a second to get those archers, uh, wardens down there, just because they're going to get hit by a few things here, and they've got a little bit less hit points. But I'm going to drop this down, and then go ahead and drop in there. And then I'm watching. What I'm doing is right now is I'm watching those spell towers down down south there, the uh, curse towers. I'm watching. Let's see. Let's go. So I'm going to drop that right on there. And what you probably already know is if you go ahead and put your finger on this and then don't drag it, um, or you can drag it a little bit, but don't don't let go of it, it actually slows down time there a little bit just to help you out. So I'm going to drop this down again there because I am talking. I'm not sure how close I am to that 10 seconds. It really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Boom. Done. All right, if you want to keep going with it, uh, you can. Uh, really not too much of an issue here. Just got to keep these guys healed. Go ahead and throw this down. I'll just do this for kicks, whatever. Oopsie. I'll just fast forward through this. It's, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Once you get past those spell towers, you're done. All right. All right, let's move on to the next one. And let's see what we get. Okay. On the next one, we are going against a sentinel this time. So we'll be a little bit more buffed, but um, only 10%, so not too much. What do we have here? Of course, SH-11, Curse Tower, uh, Flash Freeze, and the Crippling Poison Spell. All right, your choice. Uh, 
dealer's choice on this one, how you want to go about it. There's so many different ways you could beat this. The one thing that's going to be a little difficult is it's pressed down against the side, so it's going to be a little difficult to funnel those with your dragon. You'd have to use your troops to be able to funnel them through. Uh, take a look at uh, the possibilities up top with that one. Certainly you could use like a brander. Uh, you could use a... I uh, didn't mean to press that. Uh, you could press... Uh, you could use a Zelonia. You could use other things that would... Uh, maybe a Siku or something. Um, this thing is going to freeze them right about the time they get to the place where you want to get it done. So if you're going to do that, bring an archer, which will stand outside of that freeze, and the wardens will shoot away at that, and it'll be uh, easy. What I would, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my uh, um, uh, four veil and just make sure that I get these things properly funneled here. I think I can get away with being able to throw the Scaria down in the corner there just to be able to help a little bit. I might then uh, zoom her across. Uh, I'll decide on the way here, but um, yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll zoom her across to take out hopefully both those builders, bring her way up there, and then bring her back down when uh, I have that ability. Because I'm using the, uh, um, all right, let's just get going with this one. I think I talked enough. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop that down there for just a little bit out of the range of everything. Once it's about to engage, or about to finish with this and get engaged by uh, all the other ones, I'm going to take it and drop and put it up here. And it's going to get start getting shot at here. All right. Now, that's probably not the best way to have gone about it, but you know what? I'm a little less concerned with this one. All right, let's see how far these guys go. Okay, I'll bring my dragon back here. Bring them down. Not the prettiest, but you can see I got a lot of guys. A few guys got loose there, but that's not a big deal. Okay, now, uh, as you probably already know, with four vil, you can't stack these, so you got to wait till it's done uh, and try and time it right. Once again, you can press your finger down on it, uh, on the spell, and be able to, helps a little bit. Now I'm going to bring my... Dragon right in there, just to try and get a little firepower on there. Uh, this is pretty easy, though, um, at least with the level of paladins and other things that I have going on here. It's pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to do this for, you know, visual effect and all that. All right, let's move on to the next base. Um, while we're moving on, by the way, that way that the reason why that works is that flash freeze does no damage whatsoever to these guys as they're coming in protected. Plus, it protects them from everything else, so you can be able to hit the, uh, be safe from the spell as well as uh, very safe from a lot of the other stuff. And if you've got your paladins in there, it's just going to help heal them. All right, so let's just see what's on, on the plate here for the next one against Eddard Stark. Eddard, Eddard. All right. Oh, okay. Well, this this at least makes you think long enough about how you're going to funnel your troops or something. Um, this one you can do a couple different ways uh, because as I said these things don't bother me at all those are so I think easy to deal with if you have any paladins in there because it just kind of counteracts it um, let's see should I do a fun one on this one I think I will I'm gonna change it around I'm gonna do um, Erasmus just for kicks all right, what I need to do on this one is I need to get to that third ability. I start with five, but I need to get to the third ability, so I need to get ten here. Uh, he has all the things on the outside. It's going to make it easy, but it's so much fun when uh, you can be able to watch other things killing themselves because uh, the third ability here, affected units reflect 75% of damage back for uh, nine seconds. So I think what I'll do is I'll drop this out. I'm, I'm being a little cavalier about this, but um, I think because I'm using this, I'm going to ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta da I think I'll keep what I got. It's working well. All right. I was contemplating maybe throwing instead of the archer, putting a soldier in there. Right now, I'm just trying to get the extra mana around the outside. I've got to go down and grab this one down here to funnel, anyways. Uh, this one I'm about to go to here in just a second. So, um, and then what I think I'll do is I'll come over in this area and grab those last two things. Uh, as long as you ha attack with at least about a minute 15 left on a base like this, it it's totally sufficient. Um, all right, so I'm going to come down here and just kind of cut off the gap a little bit here just to make it a little bit easier to funnel my guys. Oh, okay, well, since he's going to go there, 
I'll give them time. All right, now I've almost got my entire thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, push in here without my dragon. And just put him up there where he's nice and safe and sound. Done a little damage there in the middle as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this archer to my advantage. Just drop that there. Funnel these this way. I like dropping those when the catapults. The catapults are the most susceptible to them. I would have liked to have gotten all my guys together, but I figured if I dropped that catapult early, uh, it would be even better. All right, since I'm getting bored of the dragon being out there because I like him to be in the middle of it, let's do this. Reflecting all that back. Doing some massive damage. If you're looking at the defenses that are shooting at them, they're getting, especially the splash damage, just get just whomped on by those things. And they really... Uh, because they're hitting so many different troops that they're taking massive amount of damage and they aren't overbuilt. The point damage doesn't do isn't as good because it, it's only doing to the one and it's getting 75% of that one, but not 75% of the collective. So, uh, all right, let's just finish this up. Throw down some extra guys just because you know it's more fun to be epic victory than regular victory. Anyways, pretty straightforward. Uh, hopefully, if somebody needed help on that, this is helpful. Interesting to see anyways. Uh, always fun to kill the king. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, anyways, this is Mick It with One Kingdom. Make sure that you like and subscribe and keep ahead of your rivals.